This is Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, the channel nomics podcast that connects you with channel chiefs, thought leaders, and executives about what it takes to get the next generation of tech to market. Here's your host, Larry Walsh, the CEO and Chief Analyst of Channel Nomics. Hey everyone, welcome back to Changing Channels. As the lady said, I'm Larry Walsh, and of course, behind me is my high school math homework, and this also explains why I failed math. Um, <laughs> this is, you know, oftentimes I tell our guests when they say, well, what are you going to ask me about? And I say, well, we're going to talk about things that you know about, your experiences, your insights, and I promise there will be no math involved. I can't say the same about today because today we're here to talk about key performance indicators. Now, set this up properly. Everyone likes to quote, you know, former GE CEO Jack Welch, you know, for saying that, you know, if it can't be measured, it can't be managed. Well, Jack Welch may not have said that, but everybody likes to say it. Uh, a guy, you know, that I take a lot of inspiration from, W. Uh, Edward Demings, you know, is a great process and management guru who said, if, you know, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. And that's one of the hallmarks of our industry and the technology is that we, we build ourselves on this notion that we generate and know what to do with data. So we generate a ton of data and we tell the world that we know how to use it to make everything better. However, one of the things that we are constantly bumping up against is what should we measure, particularly in channels and channels is often challenged in proving its value. And so channel chiefs are often looking for what should be the key performance indicators that they should that they can use to demonstrate the value of partners, the contribution of partners, and the importance of channels to their organizations. And it is a moving target. You know, so it's something that would see, be seemingly simple since, you know, since we are an established part of the, of the IT industry fabric, that we should know what KPIs should be there. But it's always something that seems to be in question, seems to be in doubt, and people want to know what others are doing to measure channel performance. So a couple of months ago, I was at a virtual conference, Channel Focus, you know, produced by our friends at uh, Bapti & Company. And if you don't know about it, please reach out to me. I'm happy to tell you more about how you can get involved in Channel Focus. It truly is the event that channel professionals need to be at. But in one of the roundtable discussions that I was helping to facilitate um, was on KPIs. And it was really one of the more engaging discussions uh, at that event. And so I thought that maybe the person I was doing that, event, doing that discussion with should come here and talk about KPIs. And so with that, I want to introduce Christian Alvarez. He is a senior vice president of worldwide channels and all route to markets at Nutonix, hyperconvergence company you may have heard of. Uh, but he's been around the industry. He's worked at Juniper. He's held senior channel and sales leadership positions at Juniper, at Cyan, uh, and at Avaya. So suffice to say, he has a fair amount of experience when it comes to this very question we're here to talk about, you know, what is a good channel KPI? So with that, Christian, welcome to Changing Channels. Thanks, Larry, and I really appreciate you having me. It's always great seeing uh, you. Uh, look, it's great to have you on. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Uh, look, I want to start by, you know, asking you, you know, right up front, you know, the hardest question we're going to throw at you <laughs> is, you know, how do you spell KPI? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, and I think hopefully your audience knows that answer, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's certainly a softball question. It, well, you but, know, look, you know, we, we don't like to, you know, we, you know, you know, we don't like the challenge too hard, but it, it truly, let, let's bring this into a serious scope though, is that rather than saying, how do you spell a KPI, you know, what is it that makes key performance indicators so difficult to actually define? Because look, you've heard this and I've heard, I hear this all the time. What should we be measuring? Yeah, look, and I, and I do want to answer your question, all joking aside, I think if, if you were to ask 10 people, what is their definition or how do you spell KPI, you'd probably get 11 different answers, right? It all depends on the person, their function, their role, um, and what data they're trying to capture. The, the importance of, of KPI, I would have to say, and, and, and certainly uh, a fan of, of, of Walsh, but measure what matters, right? Yeah. That at the end of the day is the most fundamental point. And you said something that is so spot on, Larry. There are so many parts in measuring the channel from attribution to growth to, to 
you know, new logos. And, and, and the reality is, is that when we go talk to our CFOs or our head of sales or, you know, the, the folks in accounting, they have different measurements and things that they want to measure out of the channel. And often, and I speak to my colleagues all around the world, you know, we're often being asked for all, tons of information uh, from the channel. So it's certainly hard to keep up with the KPI requests from our constituents and all of our colleagues. Yeah, let's start there. What, you know, who are the constituents for channel KPIs? Uh, you know, uh, a guy, I'm sorry, you know, a guy who used to work with us here at Channelnomics, uh, Alex Hart, who's now at AWS, you know, he used to love to say that, you know, the channel chief, you know, for a channel chief, your customer is your management. It's not the partner. It's not even the end customer. You're trying to satisfy your organization. But is that necessarily true in what you're talking about in terms of how do, who do you define the KPIs for? So we, you know, it depends on the company, right? And I'm going to generalize. Uh, most yeah. companies have many different routes to market. GSIs, you're, you may have your OEM platform providers, your service providers, um, you know, distribution, your traditional resellers, right? But we certainly serve a lot of masters within our companies, right? You have your, your global head of sales and, and they have their set of KPIs and, and, and their important targets that they're going after and holding us accountable and measuring the channel. But when you double click on that and you start working your way down, you have your theater sales leaders and your regionals. And at the end of the day, these are all the people that we're servicing and supporting. Now, when you expand the KPIs specific to constituents, you know, when, when we talk to our alliance partners, um, they have a set of KPIs that they're holding us accountable to as well, right? And at times I've been seeing, you know, some great alignment uh, with these key partners on alignment with their KPIs, setting goals and what good looks like, and we're reciprocating the same thing. And I can't express how important that is, because as I said before, you have to measure what matters. And partners have certain goals as well as we do, and you have to get aligned on those goals and then measure them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you in on what you there's two things you said I want to I want to tie back to is that I agree with you. You should measure what matters and you should define what is good. But how do you know what matters? Because I have seen this uh, countless times where we start going through exercises of trying to demonstrate the value of channel to a skeptical management team. And we start talking about number of partners trained, number of portal logins, uh, number of, of marketing downloads, et cetera. And does that matter? Well, sure, it mattered to the person who was pulling the information but ultimately did it matter to the contribution to the business? And so, and it goes hand in hand with that entire notion of, well, what is good? I, I will tell you, I asked that question um, at the beginning of the year, define what is good. And I still haven't gotten a reasonable answer yet because of everyone's definition for what, what counts as good is different. Agreed. And I think that if you, if you set up a comprehensive business plan, with a partner and that's based on objectives and goals that have been mutually agreed upon. Th if those goals are achieved and it delivers accretive results to both companies, that's step number one. Now you assign and apply those KPIs or balance scorecard. So business plan alignment, first and foremost, now you turn on the KPIs to measure those different points. As you mentioned, marketing is going to have their set of KPIs, right? Operations has their set of KPIs around velocity, quote to cash, error rates, like with distribution and all those things. But if you've set up a business plan and you've set up what good looks like and everybody is running towards that same goal, you should absolutely have KPIs and keep it simple. It drives me crazy when when I hear people talk about I have 35 different KPIs. 
th that doesn't work, right? Set up very clear uh, KPIs, set up the goals, align to the business plan. And to me, I think that is a comprehensive, most simplistic way to really leverage the power of KPIs. I would also have to say is, you know, business reviews, monthly business reviews, quarterly business reviews. I think that is so important because if you've established a business plan and you've set up what good looks like with goals, measure them often. Keep an eye on it, right? There's that old saying that objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Yeah. You don't want to wait till the end of your fiscal year or your calendar year. You have to have these checkpoints to measure what matters along the way. And then you're either going, you know, with your partner to marriage counseling or rehab or whatever, right? Yeah. But you may have to revector, right? And look, a KPI is never a bad thing, right? You may have a KPI that the partner is growing at a very rapid rate. Now we need to reestablish a baseline and revector those goals because we in a great problem to have, right, Larry? But you've exceeded yeah. what great looks like. Yeah. Now, and just for everybody, just so you everyone is on the same page, objects in the rear of your mirror, it's not just a warning, it's also a meatloaf song. So <laughs> Christian, and you knew that. Okay. You know, so but pivot this back to internal, you know, because what you've been describing is what you're, you know, how do you establish performance metrics between you and your partner, but you also have to do this upstream to your management. How do you establish the KPIs that demonstrates the value to, of the channel to your, to your own management? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, uh, I try to keep it when I go upstairs and, and, and work my way up to, you know, the CEO staff and leadership is I try to keep it at, you know, less than 10 KPIs. And it's the traditional ones we all know, growth, um, you know, partner initiated deals, new logo, um, discount rates is something that we absolutely look at. Um, we look at, you know, demand gen campaigns and those sort of things. And what's the return on investment, right? We all have our precious resources of dollars and, mm -hmm. uh, an important KPI for marketing is for, you know, every dollar we invest into a partner, every company has their own yields that they'd like to see, but that's an important KPI. Partner lift uh, is is certainly important, right? Because partners drive tremendous value. Now, the, the KPIs I just talked about, very general. Now, when you start expanding on some of those, you may have some variations for like distribution or your GSIs, right? Because they're influencing a lot more. They're working more on the architectural. And those have certainly different types of KPIs. But in the most simplistic way is growth, profitability and uh, partner value and new logo are the most key. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things, you, so you use the term, which surprises me how many people ask me to define for them, which is channel lift. So, so please, you know, I'd like to hear your definition. Look, channel lift is uh, partners that are driving value. They, they come in early into an opportunity. They have uh, their own uh, sales process, be it MedPick, their own you know, discipline around qualifying an opportunity. And if a partner is early and often integrating your solution um, and, and really driving that value, um, that to me is partner lift. Um, when it's, especially if it's a new logo, um, that customer was uh, found by the partner. That is my definition of partner lift. Mm -hmm. And I would also have to complement it by saying that, you know, sales autonomy, channel sales autonomy to me is something that something I'm obsessed with lately. It's something I think about every day, especially in today's subscription and consumption based economy. Our world is changing, right? How customers are procuring and consuming technology is evolving and i don't think larry you would disagree nor your audience would disagree that it is going to continue to evolve and the yeah. channel and distribution is under tremendous pressure partner lift is all about driving value manufacturers like nutanix and many others we have the responsibility and that's why i love your show and and, and all the different 
subject matter experts and my colleagues that you have on often. I'm a huge fan, by the way, Larry. Um, we have a responsibility to help our partners continue to drive value, to drive lift. And we have to explore things. And a lot of our peer groups are doing this today, but offering our partners with telemetry, with early warning systems, with you know customer information, especially as some a lot of this technology today is phoning home, maintaining the customer privacy, but by empowering our partners with this information, they can absolutely elevate themselves and get in front of a problem and turn it into an opportunity to achieve a business outcome. That is so important and top of mind for many people in your audience, Larry. All right, so here's the question is that so we frame this up i think fairly well is that you know welsh was right you know it's not that it can't if it can't be measured it, it can't be managed it's that we need data in order to effectively manage our organizations in order to be able to demonstrate value okay that's clear then why is this so hard why is it that when you and i get into a room with a you know, full of people who are very smart, experienced, who have been doing jobs like yours and mine for a long time, still struggle with this question of how to define the KPIs for their organization. It's so subjective. It's who's that audience? Who's that person there? What's their understanding of the channel? Um, mm. I have to admit throughout my career, I often find myself taking out crayons and construction paper and explaining the power of the channel, the value of distribution, what is two tier. And your, your question is, is so spot on because if someone doesn't have the fundamental understanding of what is the channel, what is the partner and distribution and the value that distribution brings to this whole ecosystem, how in the world are they gonna understand what a KPI is or interpret the data of the KPI, right? Because you know, it depends again on their role and responsibility. And, and, and I would say that um, a lot of my colleagues in the channel deal with this day in and day out. That's why I always say, keep it simple. Keep it high level, measure what matters, stay at 10 KPIs or less, and obviously have the backup and the additional information when you do have somebody that comes in and truly understands the channel and starts asking all the right questions. Yeah, and I think you're right because the the big challenge that I often run into is it's not so much the people who get it because if they get the channel, then they're looking for the data to justify their experiences or their previous experiences that will help carry their, their strategy or their vision forward through partners. It's the skeptics that you have to fight against. It's That's the right. ones that don't know the channel. And even yeah, when you show them the right data coming from the KPIs that you're generating, that they still find a way of being dismissive about it. You're a hundred percent agreed. So I'm going to share with you and your audience, a little secret of what I do. And I would probably put this in the category of a best practice. So I hope you all get a lot of value out of this. I do, uh, I do something called adaptive KPI. And I'm going to try to patent this uh, right after today's session. Um, just kidding. Yeah. So what I mean by adaptive KPI is know your audience. We all do uh, quarterly business reviews and monthly business reviews, internal, external, doesn't matter. If you know you're going to meet with your CFO and or your sales leader, or different groups in the organization, and you're coming in to present anything that has data, KPI, scorecard, you should absolutely adjust, not the results, but what KPIs you're gonna be presenting to that audience. Um, because that will absolutely allow you to control the agenda and the information and make it a much better experience for yourself, but also to the people that you're presenting to. So adaptive KPIs has really helped me a lot by knowing my audience and who I'm presenting to. Yeah. And by the way, did you know the trademark filing fee is only $95? I just discovered that for some reason <laughs> while you were speaking. Adaptive KPIs. <laughs> That's right. I just so, registered the domain, so I beat you there. <laughs> 
so like what what's what is your go-to kpi what is the thing that you put out in front first it, because like, christian the thing that i wrestle with is exactly that you know what's good measure what matters but everyone wants to get down to what's the number you know what is the what is the 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 signal the the indicator the, the number that says yes we're good we're not good so what's yeah, your go to for sure so i typically run uh, my organization here uh, on i start with 11 kpis high level i look at number of active partners um, my definition of an active partner is a, is a transacting partner within x amount uh, of time that they've transacted so we mm -hmm. look at partner activity uh, and we look at that on a on a monthly quarterly basis um, we look at um, by segmentation which are the ones that are active we look at um, uh, partner initiated deals that's one of the most important um, kpis because that's at the end of the day the measuring stick that we use on measuring partner lift and partner value. So which partners are initiating uh, the deals, bringing in those opportunities, and which of those are new logos. Um, then the, the next layer of KPIs below that are based on certain routes to market and distribution and some of those. Those, and obviously growth, and I mean, I'm not gonna repeat myself, the fundamental KPIs are obviously baked into those 11, but that is the most simplistic. Um, now, of those 11, what I personally do is, uh, based on the last quarter's result and the quarterly business review that I'm reporting on, I look at big movers, right? Was partner initiated deals uh, a material change from the previous quarter? And then I'll highlight those KPIs. But at a very high level, those are the core fundamental KPIs that we report on. Hmm. So since we're quoting gurus and common sayings, I'm just going to continue with it because that's just to show that I don't have an original thought. Um, but what do we always say about, you know, about analytics, garbage in garbage out, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give away who it is. Um, but we worked with one of the companies that we worked with on analyzing their channel. Uh, we said, okay, look, let's take a look at the data and like, you'll appreciate this Christian. You have worldwide in your, in your title. Um, they said, let's take a look at your data. And they said, great, we have a single source of truth. That's fantastic. Um, worldwide, they had 22 single points of truth. And they had a common standard for all with regional variations. And what did that end up me meaning? That means none of the data lined up. So I see this as a huge challenge is if you're going to have KPIs and then you have to have a common agreement about what the data is supposed to be as it's being generated, not after the fact. So how do you as a channel leader influence or, or even dictate what data should be collected, how it should be collected, how it should be organized and how to retrieve it? The single most biggest challenge that we have, and I probably speak for many of the people in your audience, it is the toughest. And it's dependent on where are you at in your journey as a company? Are you a startup? Are you, you know, thriving and growing and, and all that? But yeah, that old saying, garbage in, garbage out, uh, is, is certainly true. Um, we have been uh, doing a lot of things to help cleanse the data, um, but it, it is a challenge and, and I don't have an easy answer. Uh, I wish I did, right? We are really proud with our partnership um, with uh, Zift One. We've been um, consolidating the number of platforms and how the data and the sources of data come in. That has helped us streamline and, and lower our error rates and increase our quality. Uh, I'd say a couple of years ago, we probably had nine different systems and all had their own databases and their own sources and it was tough. Now I'm gonna take this question in a, in a different direction for a minute and, and I think you'll appreciate it, Larry. Aside from the quality of data and all the different data sources coming in, my other biggest challenge is when a company changes a strategy, right? Mm. Here at Nutanix, we pivoted from you know, life of device, and now we're, we've 
turned into a subscription, a software subscription company. All of that data now has a new dimension, new data points, new KPIs, a new way of measuring the partner. And when you think about renewal rates and, and you know, able, you know, able to, to renew and, and all these different things and churn and all that stuff, when baselines change, when we go from total contract value to now annual contract value, that puts a lot of pressure on your data analysts and your teams that build all these KPIs because now you have to reinterpret, you have to re-baseline, you have to change percentages and all those things. And that, that is a huge challenge, right? Yeah. And remember my comment before, in today's consumption and subscription-based economy, a lot of our KPIs and systems and how we measure are changing as well. Yeah, you know, and look, one of the things that is particularly challenging to a lot of companies in 21 is <laughs> figuring out what the actual impact in 20 was. I mean, yeah, let's face it, everyone, is that I, this is what we tell a lot of the companies who we work with, don't trust your 2020 data for comparison reasons. It's such an anomalous year. It doesn't matter whether you had a good year or a bad year. It's an outlier year. You're better off comparing to 19 than you are comparing to, you know, comparing to 20. But we really are all in the reset mode, you know, this year going forward over the next few years. So that we have to reestablish those baselines. Same idea, Christian. Yeah, you're spot on. And yeah, the other thing that we did is I pivoted our partner program from, you know, the typical three tiers, whoever sells the most reaches the highest platinum level or whatever, nothing wrong with that program. So for, for the partners that have that today, you know, certainly it's proven. Uh, but I decided to go a different route, which was a competency based uh, program. And it's something we're really proud of. And it's really quite simple. And, but this yet is another fundamental change in KPIs and certain things from how we were measuring the partner before to now you're measuring a partner based on their skill sets, their domain expertise. It's lend itself, you know, here comes another important KPI. How do you measure your markets that you're underserving, right? Mm. Maybe you have a bunch of partners in, in a particular geographic location, but what's their competency? What are their domain expertise? You may, you may be underserving that market because you don't have the right partners with the right certifications or skill sets, right? So there's a lot here when you peel back on this onion. It's, uh, that's why channel chiefs are known as Swiss Army Knives. We need to know a, a little bit of, of a lot of stuff. Yeah, definitely special forces. You know, I think there's a <laughs> whole lot going on in there, right? Yeah. So, look, I, I want to I want to ask you, you know, you know, just to close out this conversation, because you I, you and I could talk about this for hours. But as we all know, there's a limited amount of capacity on the Internet. So we have to keep these videos fairly short. So come on, Christian, you can laugh at that. <laughs> uh, what is it? You know, what's the thing if, you know, like we were in the conversation at the conference, somebody comes to you and asks you for one essential thing that you they should be doing and establishing the KPIs beyond just the you know measure what matters what's the one mistake you think they should avoid trying to measure too many things keep yeah. it simple again know your audience uh, don't try to measure everything and anything that's yeah. the most simplistic that, short answer I can give you yeah the one th bit of advice I give to channel chiefs trying to establish their KPIs is establish them up front in the beginning. Everyone who tries to bolt on KPIs at the end often fail. They go, or I shouldn't say fail. I should say that they, they get dismissed because it looks like a trying to retrofit justifications without real evidence. So always try to get agreement up front. So one thing I do want to mention before we wrap up is that uh, Channelnomics has information, some guidance on KPIs. We have a guide to the 10 essential KPIs that all channel chiefs should be using. So please come to our site and check it out. And I want to thank you, Christian Alvarez, the Senior Vice President of Worldwide Channels and All Routes to Market at Nutonix for joining us. I, I literally wish we could keep talking about this and I want to have you back sometime. Anytime, Larry. Thank you so much. And thank your audience uh, as well for joining. Thank you for joining Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, a production of Channelnomics, with the support of our production team at Modern Podcasting. If you've enjoyed today's episode, 
hit the like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and share with your friends. For more information about Channelnomics services and insights, follow us on Twitter and YouTube, and check out our website at channelnomics.com. Channelnomics is a registered trademark of and changing channels is copyright by 2112 Enterprises, LLC.